All right, well, you know what? <clears throat> All right, actors, like, let's do this thing. <laughs> As we're waiting for our actors. I think that's everybody. Cameras and mics on. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Beth Donesco, and on behalf of the All Stories Theater Company, I want to thank our audience today for joining us and welcome you to this presentation of The Tempest. Before we begin, we would like to introduce our actors and they will tell you who they're playing in this rather um, large casted play. So first, Mr. Alan White. Hi, uh, I'm playing Prospero. Um, just wanna to say to anyone who's listening, I hope you and your family are safe and healthy. Aaliyah Harris. Hi, my name is Aaliyah and I'll be playing Miranda. Janet Sozio. Hi, I'm Janet. I'm making my theater debut as the narrator. And hello to all that are watching from home. Great to have you. John Trent. Hello, I'll be playing Antonio and I'm glad you're all joining us tonight. Thank you. Judith. Judith. Nelson Dilday. Hello, I'm playing Alonso. I'm glad to see you here with us tonight. Poti Toko. Hello, I'm playing Tranquilo, Tranquilo and uh, I'm happy to have you all here. Lorna Nguera. Hi, I'm playing Ariel. Um, thank you for coming and peace to all. Michael. Leggy. Leggy. <laughs> I'm playing Stefano and Ceres. And I want to say hello to all my fans. <laughs> <laughs> Milton Kai Kendall. Uh, hi, I'm playing Francisco, uh, Adrian, and the boat Swain. And thank you for coming. Reagan Comedy. Hello, I'm Reagan. And not to be outdone, I would also like to say um, hello to my fan. <laughs> oh, and I'm playing Ferdinand. <laughs> Reggie Joseph. Hello, my name is Reggie, and I would like to welcome those watching tonight on this wonderful Sunday. And I am Sebastian. And Craig Whitford. Hello, everyone. My name is Craig, and I would like to uh, thank my fan. Hi, Ethan. <laughs> Now, if those of you are viewing at home and you have a grid extension on your uh, Google Meet, if you are watching on one of our um, emails, you can put on the grid function um, and then you can see all of us at the same time. If not, don't worry. It's still going to be a great show. And we are about to begin. So I'd ask actors to take their places or leave their places as the case may be. <laughs> And again, if you are trying to get into this meeting, um, you're going to want to use our, people are trying to get into our meeting, which we appreciate because we do enjoy company. However, um, it is not the meeting that you want, it is the live stream. So please try to find the live stream on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash all stories theater company and follow the information there for your viewing enjoyment. So now um, our actors are ready and it's time for us to begin The Tempest. Q, scene one. All actors not in the scene, please close your cameras off, thank you. And Q, scene one.
Behold, a mysterious deserted island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. A great storm, a tempest, if you will, has just torn through it. A mere act of nature? No, this storm was the handiwork of Prospero. A sorcerer stranded these many years in this place with his daughter, Miranda. As Miranda takes in the wreckage of the storm, she voices concerns about the consequences of her father's magic. This leads Prospero to finally reveal a secret. And our story begins. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, I them. The sky, it seemed, would pour down stinking pitch but that the sea mounted to the welkin's cheek dashed the fire out oh i have suffered with those that i saw suffer a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces oh the cry did knock against my very heart poor souls they perished had i any power had I been any god of a power, I had had sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship had swallowed up and the fraught souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee. My dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort, the direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in my art, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much per dane as an hair, but tid to any creature in the vessel, which thou heardst cry, which thou sawst sink. Sit down, for thou must know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, no, not yet. The hours now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Obey and be attentive. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Sir, are you not my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou his only heir and princess no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! My brother and thy uncle called Antonio, I pray thee, mark me that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom next thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state. The government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Being so retired in my false brother awaked an evil nature. He being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory, to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution and exacting the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing, to have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute, Milan. Mark his condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have born bad sons. Now the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, 
which was that he, in lieu o oh, the premises of homage and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother. Whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight Fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Alack for pity, I'd not remembering how I cried out then, who cried over again. It is a hint that rings my eyes to it. Hear a little further, then I'll bring thee to the present business which now is upon us without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench, my tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fairer painted their foul deeds. In few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast, the very rats instinctively had quitted. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds, whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I to you then? Oh, a cherubim! Thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with a fortitude from heaven, when I have decked the sea with drops full salt, under my burthen groaned, which raised in me the undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we to shore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, being then appointed master of this design, did give us, with rich garments, linens, stuffs, and necessities, which since have steadied much. So of his gentleness, knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from my own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man. Now I arise. Sit still and hear the last of our sorrow. Now, I pray you, sir, for it is beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea storm. Know thus far forth. By accident, most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. And by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influences, if now I court not, but omit my fortunes, will ever after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I'm ready now. Approach my Ariel, come. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task Ariel and all her quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, in the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometime I'll divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yard, the bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. And the Fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring of the most mighty Neptune seem to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who is so firm, so constant, that his coil would not infect his reason? Oh, not a soul that felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. 
All but mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstanding, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. <laughs> Why, that's my spirit. But was not this nigh shore? Oh, uh, close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished, on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bad'st me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left, cooling of the air with sighs, in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Well, safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermuthis, there she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep, and for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again and are bound sadly home for Naples. Supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. There more toil. Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is that thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. Ah. I prithee, remember, I have done thee worthy service told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, uh, served without or grudge or grumble, thou didst promise to bake me a full year. Dost thou forget from what torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinks it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy has grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. And for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee, by help of her more potent ministers, in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there. Thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry beasts. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. Thank thee, Master. If thou more murmurst, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What? shall I do? Go make thyself like a nympho of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this shape and hither come it. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. 
The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on, we'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What o, slave? Caliban, thou earth, thou speak. Tis when up within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come now, tortoise. When? Thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam. Come forth. And scatter from unwholesome thing. Drop on you both. I felt with blow on ye and blister you all over. For this, be sure tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Urchins shall, for the vast of the night that they may work, all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched, as thick as a honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than the bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine, by cigarettes, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, and made much of me, wouldst give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light. And have the rest that burn by day and night. And then I love thee and show thee all the quality of fresh paradise. And I did so the charms of cigarettes, tongues, beetles, that light on you. For I am all that you love, which King, and near you, being this hot rock, will she keep me from the rest of the island? Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. <laughs> oh! Would it have been done? Thou didst prevent me. I had people else in this isle with Caliban's. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness wilt not take, being capable of all ill. I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not savage know thine own meaning. But what's gabble like a thing most brutish? I endowed thy purpose with words that made them known. But thy vile race, thou, though thou didst learn, had that itch which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit on it is I know how to curse. A red plague rid you for learning me your language. Head seed heads. Fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Trucks thou malice. If thou neglect'st or dost unwilling me, what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps. Fill thy bones with aches. Make thee roar that beast shall tremble at thy din. No. Pray thee. I must obey. Art is It would control my damn squad, sentiments and they So, slave, hence. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it come, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it came, carries a brave form. Tis a spirit. No, wench, it eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and but he's something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker, 
thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find him. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Most sure. The goddess on whom these heirs attend. Oh, safe my prayer. Uh, uh, may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will have some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder if you be maid or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language. Heavens, I, I, I am the best of them to speak the speech where I but where it's spoken. How? The best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now. The wonder is to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me. And that he does, I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine, who with mine eyes, never since an ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Oh, alack for mercy. Yes, faith in all his lords. The Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee. If now twere fit to do it at the first sight, they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that ever I saw, the first that ever I, I sighed for. Pity, move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, not one word more. They're both in either's powers, but with this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. And scene. Antonio and Sebastian. Uh, I said narrator. No, no. Okay. Yes. And scene two. While love blooms, let us venture to another part of the island and find a group of men newly marooned by Prospero's storm. And what a complicated bunch they are. First, there's Alonzo, his highness, the king of Naples. Is he an enemy of Prospero? Yes. He supported Prospero's exile for his own gain. And here is Antonio, Prospero's duplicitous brother, the man who led the coup d'etat. Antonio has the ear of Sebastian, brother of King Alonso. Is another fratricide afoot? Or will kinder and kinder hearts and wiser heads prevail? Alonso's good and honorable old counselor, Gonzalo, the gentle Adrian, and the optimistic Francesco. Here they are on the beach, the men with their bearings. The air breathes upon us here most sweetly. Mm, as if it had lungs in rotten ones. Or as to a perfume by a festering fen. Uh, here's everything uh, advantageous to life. True. Save means to live. Of oh, that's there none or little. How much and lusty the grass. The ground indeed. Green. The ground indeed is tawny. With an eye of green ink. Mist is not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, uh, which is indeed uh, almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, uh, being as they were drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and glossy, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there. For coming thence, my son is lost, and in my rate, she too. 
who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. O oh, thou mine heir of Naples and Milan, what strange fish has made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swain that met him. His bold head bowed the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with good arms in lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-worn bases bowed as stooping to relieve him, I not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss, that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she at least is banished from your eye. Who hath cause to wet the grief on it? Prithee, peace. You are kneeled and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself, weighed between loathiness and obedience, at which end of the beam should, should go, we have lost your son. I fear, forever, Milan and Naples have, more widows in them of this business is making, then we bring men to comfort them, the faults your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My Lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and gentleness and, and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most chirurgically. It is foul weather and us all good, sir, when you are cloudy. Mm, foul weather? Very foul. Had I a plantation of this isle, my lord? He'll sow it with nettle seed. Mm, or docks, or mellows. And were the king on, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. Uh, in the Commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. Letters should not be known. Riches. Poverty and use of service, none. Contract, succession, uh, born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. For use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil, no occupation. All men idle, all. And women too, <laughs> but innocent and pure, no sovereignty. Yet he would be king on it. Mm. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. <laughs> uh, all things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine would I not have. But nature should bring forth of its own kind all force and all abundance to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Oh, God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo! Uh, and do you mark me, sir? Prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. No, I warrant you, I will not uh, venture my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep, for I am very heavy? Go sleep and hear us. Ah, oh, what a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Mm, nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. Dropped by a thunderstroke. What might? Worthy Sebastian, oh, what might? No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be, the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou walking? Do you not hear me speak? I do. And surely it is a strange language, and thou speakest. 
Out of thy sleep, what is it thou didst say? Uh, this is a strange repose to be asleep? With eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep. Die, rather, winkst whilst thou art waking. Mm, thou dost snore distinctively. There's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too if heed me which to do trebles thee over. Mm, well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, Teeb. Hereditary sleuth instructs me. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance this, who shall be of his little memory when his earth hath here almost persuade, for he is a spirit of persuasion only, professes to persuade the king his son's alive, tis as impossible that he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims. Hmm, I have no hope that he is undrowned. Hmm. Oh, out of that no hope, Anna. Out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond. But doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. Hmm. She that is queen of Tunis, she that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life, she that from Naples can have no note unless the sun were post. What stuff is this? How say you, this true? My brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples? Twitch switch regions, there are some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, how shall Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep with this for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember. You did supplement your brother, Dario. Mm, true. And look how well my garments sit upon me. Much fatter than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now, they are my men. Hmm. But, for your conscience. Aye, sir. Where lies that? If to archive, would put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan, candid be they and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother. No better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead. Whom I, in this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, whilst you, whilst you doing thus to the perpetual wink of an eye, might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not upbraid our course. For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. <laughs> they'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Hmm. That case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou goddess Mulan, I'll come by Naples, draw thy sword, one stroke, shall free thee from the tribune which thou prepayest, and I the king shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall at Don Gonzalo. My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are and sends me forth. For else his project dies to keep them living. Awake! Awake! And scene. Scene three. I wonder if Gonzalo will see Antonio's point. <laughs> also, shipwrecked on this day, yes, there are more, 
We find the jester, Pinculo, and the butler, Stefano, both of whom like a drink. The two men have encountered our devil witch offspring, Caliban, who believes at least one of these two men is a god. For men of the servant class, this is quite a promotion. Together, what will these three lowly men get up to? How did thou escape? How camest thee hither? Swear by this bottle, thou camest hither. I s escaped on a, a sack which the sailors heaved overboard. By this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with my own hands, since I was cast ashore. I swear on that bottle to be thine, for thy contents is unearthly. Here, swear then, how thou escapest. Some ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I will swim. Here, kiss the book. Thou can swim like a duck. Thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, has any more of this? The whole butt, man. My <laughs> cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, moon calf? How does thine of you? Uh, didst thou come from heaven? Out of the moon. I do assure thee, I was the man of the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me this, my dog, and my bush. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear. By this good light, this is a very sharp monster. I have fear of him. A very weak monster. A man in the moon. In the moon. A, most, a most poor, credulous monster. well drawn monster a, in good suit. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island. And I will kiss thy foot. <laughs> I pray thee. Be my God. By this light, a most perfidious and drunken monster, when God's at sleep, he will rub his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself. I swear. Come on then, down and swear. <laughs> I shall laugh myself to death with this puppy headed monster, the most curvy monster I could find in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. But that is the fourth monster's drink, an abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear thee the But follow thee thou, O oh, wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster to make wonder of a poor drinker. I pray thee, let me bring thee with abs roll, and I with my long nails will dig thee in nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I'll get the young scammels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I pray thee now, lead the way without any more talking. Drink a little, the king, in all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here, here, here. Bear my bottle, fellow Tranquillo, and we'll fill him by and by again. And see. Scene four. Now we return to our young would-be lovers, Miranda and Ferdinand. Prospero secretly approves of the map. 
but is making Ferdinand prove himself by doing manual labor. Alas, now, I you, were not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you enjoined to pile. Pray, down and set you when this burns to a weep for having wearied you. My father is hard to study. Stay now. Rest yourself. Keep safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry the pile. I'll carry no, the pile. No, precious creature, I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me, as well as it does you, and I should do it. For with much more ease, for my goodwill is to it, and yours is against it. <laughs> you look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father. I have broken your hest to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I abide with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. My several virtues hath, hath I like several women. Never any with so fun a soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it into foil. But you, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every nature's best. I do not know one of my sex, no woman's face, remember, save from my glass, my own. Nor have I seen more than I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad, I'm skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel is my dower. I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can, Im can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of. But I prattle, some things too wildly in my, father precept my father's precepts, I therein do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so, I, I would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service? And there resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, am I this patient log man? Do you love me? Oh, heaven, oh, earth, bear witness to this sound. I found what I profess with kind event if I speak true. If Howley and Bert was best as bodest me to mischief, I beyond all limit of what else in the world do prize, love, honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. A fair encounter of two most rare affections. Mm. Heavens rain grace on that which breeds between them. Wherefore weep you? At my own, at mine unworthiness, that dared not offer what I desire to give, but much less what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself. The bigger bulk it shows, and bashful coming, and promptly plain and holy innocence. I am your wife, if you will marry me. If not, I will die your maid, to be your fellow. You may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. <laughs> my mistress is dearest, up, right? and I thus yeah. humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as bondage air of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. And now farewell, tis half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. And scenes.
Scene five. Well, that did escalate quickly. But now back to the story of Prospero's quest for revenge. Alonzo and his entourage are lost and wandering in the island, tired and hungry. And it doesn't help that Sebastian and Antonio are also planning a coup. At this juncture, enter Ariel. By your lacken, I can go no further, sir. My old bones ache. Here's the maze trod indeed. Move forth right to meanders. By your patience. I need much rest, Mr. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrated search on land. Well, let him go. Hmm. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. Do not for one repulse forgo the purpose that you resolved to effect. <sighs> the next advantage uh, will be taken thoroughly. Hmm. Let it be tonight. For now they are oppressed with travel. They will not nor cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. Hmm. I say tonight, no more. What harmony is this, my good friends? Hark! <coughs> Marvelous, sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens. What were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns. That in Arabia. There is one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix, at this hour reigning there. I believe both. And, and what does else want credit? Come to me, and I'll, I'll be sworn it's true. Travelers ne'er did lie, though fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, for certs they are people of the island, who though they are of monstrous shape, yet note, their manners are more gentle kind than of our human generation. You shall find many, nay, almost any. I cannot too much muse such shapes, such gesture and such sounds expressive. Although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. No matter, since they have left their valens behind, for we have stomachs. Mm. Will it please you taste of what is here? Not I. Faith, sir, you need not fear. When we were boys, who would believe that there were mountaineers dewlapped like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh? Or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts, which now we find each putter out of five for one and will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to feed, although my last. No matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to and do as we. are three men of sin, whom destiny, that hath to instrument this lower world, and what is in it, the never surfeited sea hath caused to belch up you. And on this island where men doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. <laughs> oh, you fools! I and my fellows are masters of fate, ministers of fate, the elements of whom your swords are tempered. May as well wound the loud winds or 
or would be mocked at stabs, still the still closing waters as diminish. One dowel that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strengths and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, to which foul deed the powers, delaying not forgetting, have increased the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against thee, against your peace. Thee of thy son Alonso they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wraths to guard you from. In this most desolate isle, else falls upon your heads, heart sorrow, and a clear life. Bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed my aerial, a grace it had, devouring of my instruction, has now nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. So with good life and observation strange, my meaner ministers their several kinds have done. My high charms work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power, and in these fits I leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine loved darling. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, and with him there lie mudded. And pin. Scene six, or whichever we're on. So back at the love fest, Ferdinand and Miranda have become engaged, and Prospero has conjured up, with Ariel's help, spirits of several Roman goddesses, including Juno and Venus. This is a most majestic vision, and harmoniously charmingly. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless them, that they may prosperous be, and honored in their issue, honor, riches, marriage, blessing, long continuous and increase? Hourly joys be still upon you, Juno sings her presence upon you. Earth's increase, voice and plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines and clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly birth in bowing, bring come to you with the farthest in the very end of harvest. Scarcely in want shall shun you, Ceres' blessing so is on you. Let me live here ever. So rare and wondered father and a wife makes this place paradise. Sweet now, silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush and be mute or else our spell is marred. 
I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot has almost come. Well done. Avoid no more. This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day saw him touched with anger or so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness, my brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you please, retire into my cell, and there repose a turn or two I'll walk to steal my beating mind. We you wish your peace. And scene. Scene seven. Birds of a feather continue to flock together. Caliban, his new god Stefano, and the jester Trinculo are now sneaking into Prospero's cave, about to put their coup attempt into action. They are drunk, though, and distracted by shiny objects. Prospero and Ariel, cloaked in invisibility, watch and wait. Pray you, tread softly, that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Monster, uh, I do smell a hospice at which my nose is in great indignity. Yeah, so is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. So what, but a lost monster. Good, my lord. Give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Aye, but to lose our bottle in the pool? There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. Yet, this is your harmless fairy, monster. I will fetch off my bottle, though I be over ears for my labor. For thee, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell. No noise, and enter. Do that good mischief, which may make this island nine forever. And I thy caliban, for I thy foot liquor. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano. Oh, Peter. Oh, where is Stefano? Do what the white robe here is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool. It is my trash. Oh, oh, monster. We know what belongs to a frippery. Oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Tremkilo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Every will have it. The dropsy crown this fool. What do you mean to dote on such luggage? Let alone and do the murder first. If he awake from toe to crown, yet the horse skins with pinches make a strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Monster, come. Put some light upon your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time, and I'll be turned to barnacles or to apes with foreheads filling as low. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my horse had a fine wine is, and I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Now go to, carry this. And this. And this. Hey, mountain, hey! Silver! There it goes! Silver! Fury! Fury! There, tyrant! There! There! Hark! Hark! Let them be hunted soundly, 
at this hour lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air of freedom. For a little now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his courage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so, when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together, in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir. They cannot budge till your release. <coughs> his brother and yours, abide all through this traffic, and the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay, but chiefly him that you turn, sir, the good old Lord Gobrano. His tears run down his beard, winter drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them that if you now may help them, your affection would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, that relish all as sharply, passion as they, be kindlier moved than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason, gainst my fury, do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I will fetch them, sir. Ye elves of the hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune and do fly him when he comes back. You demi-puppets that make moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof the you not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontime sun called forth the multinous winds and twixt the green sea and azure vault set roaring war to the dread rattling thunder have i given fire and rifted jove's stout oak with his own bolt the strong base promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar? Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oaked and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I here abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do to work mine end upon their senses, that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff. Bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. A, a solemn air and best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains. Now, useless boiled within thy skull, there stand, for you are spell stopped. Holy Gonzalo, honorable man. Mine eyes, even sociable to the show of thine fall fellowy drops, the charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer vision. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me, Ariel. Fetch me the hat and the rapier in my cell. I will discase me and myself present as I was sometime Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. So, 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 to the king's ship, invisible as thou art, there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and the boatswain being awakened, and force them to this place, and presently, I pray thee. Behold, Sir King, 
the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, and if this be at all a most strange story, thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brave lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. Ah, the devil speaks to him. No, for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, who three hours since were wrecked upon this shore, where I have lost. How sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss. And patient says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, of whose soft grace for the like loss I have her sovereign aid and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late and supportable to make the dear loss, have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there, that they were, I wish myself, were mudded in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offenses of truth. Their words are natural breath, but who, howsoe'er you've been justled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke, which was thrust forth of Milan, who most strangely upon this shore, where you were wrecked, was landed to be the Lord on't. No more yet of this. For tis a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will require you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet lord, you play me false. I would, no, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. Mm, a most high miracle. Though the, though the sea is threatened, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder how many goodly creatures there are here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. 
Tis new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renown, but never saw before, of whom, of whom I received a second life, and second father this lady makes him to me. I am hers. But oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrance with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you God, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. For it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen. Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples? Or rejoice beyond a common joy and set it down with gold on lasting pillars? In one voyage did Clarabel, her husband, find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero, his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves when no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Oh, look, sir. Look, uh, sir. Here's more of us. I prophesied if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now, blasphemy that switch grace overboard not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth by land? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company. The next, our ship, which but three glasses since we gave out split, is tight in the air and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. <laughs> My tricksy spirit. Was well done. Bravely, my diligence. Thou shalt be free. This is as strange a maze as e'er man trod. And there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not invest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure which shall be shortly single, I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable. Of every these happened accidents, till when be cheerful and think of each thing well. Every man shift for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself. All is but fortune. Caragio, bully monster, Caragio. Oh, Cedimus, these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is. I am afraid he will chastise me. Mark but the badges of these men, my lords. Then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. He is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, Sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions as you look to have my party. Trim it handsomely. I that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to away. 
Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt shall make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle, and in the morn I'll bring you to your ship, and so to Naples, where I have hoped to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved solemnized. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the year strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sail so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. <clears throat> my Ariel, chick. That is thy charge, then to the elements, be free and fare thou well. All actors appear. Good, Janet. So this is where the epilogue goes, where Prospero declares his charms of his road. Oh, we're giving the play just one more shot. And then we promise you, we'll stop. Like us you may feel, Tempest Tossed. The news so filled with tears and loss. We send our hopes to you and yours. And we all land on safer shores. So remember these our last words, dear friend. Just like a play, every storm ends. Wave goodbye. Don't go offline. Don't go offline. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to. Can we stop recording? And we are done. Mm -hmm.